I actually don't know. I was quite surprised to receive an email from the National Geographic. Uh, and I was very intrigued, so I did ask how they found a small group of women out of New Delhi. Um, so the only answer I got was that they had an expert uh, team of researchers. Um, but if I was to second a guess, I think um, the interest in our firm was because we are the country's only all-women law firm. And also our primary focus is on commercial laws. Um, well, I started my practice in 2013 and uh, at the time I had this idea that I should run an all-women law firm primarily because I'm a woman and I know what the challenges I had for, faced at the workplace. Um, but everybody, uh, you know, who was a well-wisher advised me against it, but I decided to try it anyway and uh, I only hired women and for the first three years we didn't tom tom. Uh, the idea to anybody but quietly um, I was hiring women and once uh, you know we found that we were getting recognized uh, awards were coming in but most importantly we were profitable and we were winning our cases there was absolutely no reason not to scream from rooftops about it so this is clearly an idea that has worked it is uh, I know what we're doing is important but when people like the National Geographic reach out, we certainly, it's a, it's a recognition, it's an endorsement that we're on the right path. Um, so what if I told you that I had the winning formula for uh, Serena Williams to be able to compete with Federer on the tennis court and equitable terms? The bad news is I don't have it for tennis, but I think I do have it for uh, the workplace and particularly for law firms. And that is that we are able to create uh, an equitable, safe environment for women to work and nurture them in a way that they are able to compete with the external world, which is primarily male dominated. So they don't have to feel that they are uh, you know, dealing with men in two spheres, which is the internal workplace and the outside workplace so you'll be able to cut off at least one of them so the way the legal field is structured we have two distinct environments one environment where you are working in office and a second environment which is uh, outside which is in the court and you're competing against other law firms I can't control the external environment, nor do we want to. We want to be able to have women that compete with men uh, on a level playing field. But the internal environment is something I can certainly control. As women, we have two types of challenges against men. One is a biological. Second challenge that most women have is the inequitable work hours. Most women have work that, is, that they have to perform at home as well as compete with men uh, on an equitable basis uh, at the workplace. So what, as a woman, I have faced this challenge uh, personally myself and therefore I wanted an environment where I could come into work between 10 and 6.30. Uh, and this is again primarily for two reasons because one is safety because a lot of the women do not have transport uh, in the evenings. Secondly, uh, on, as far as the equitable environment is concerned, most men are able to work late hours till 7 or 8 o'clock because they don't have the similar safety concerns. Secondly, they don't have to be back home at a particular hour to be able to either look after children or responsibilities of household. Now, if I have to create this environment, what did we need to do? We needed to have a structure where women feel that they can leave the office at 6.30. I get up from my desk and I leave at 6.30 so that no one else is compelled to stay here. Now, the, the ne next question that most people will have is, but you know, can law firms operate till 6.30? The answer to that is no. But in today's world where technology is available, women can do this uh, through uh, having laptops. Everything is available on cloud. Uh, there's email, books are available, uh, case law is all available online. So there's no reason why one has to be in an office environment. 
Now, if I hire men, this inequitable environment will invariably creep in, which will lead to uh, women having to compete with men at their terms. And I did not want that. And therefore, we run an all women law firm. It certainly works for us. And I'm hoping it would work uh, for other uh, businesses too. Truthfully, uh, I don't think I've faced any more challenges than most women have. And, uh, you know, I don't want to uh, go into the challenges that I have faced both personally as well as professionally. But I do want to give a, a message to, to the young women out there. And in fact, even to the young uh, legal fraternity at large, that despite challenges, despite being a first generation lawyer, being from a middle class family, this is doable. It's all about how uh, you mold yourself, the number of hours that you're willing to give into the profession, and that can happen from anywhere. And today's uh, digital environment enables you to do that as long as you're willing to put in the long hours, whether you do it at the office or, or within the vicinity of your own homes. It's it, actually the answers in your question. It's uh, it's very important for me that this statement comes that we're an all women law firm that does commercial work. We're not averse to doing pro bono work for women, but uh, it's important for me to have this statement because ultimately real equality for women will come if we are rainmakers and we are competing in fields with men on their turf and fields that are dominated by them, maths, chemistry, commercial laws. Therefore, and I'm a commercial lawyer and I wanted to nurture young women to be able to, uh, to think about law, commercial law, being rainmakers, to be able to, to, to earn money that is enough for them to be able to support f their families later. And of course, you know, f work for the upliftment of women, bring them up as they go along. So women like me that have uh, the ability to run businesses, small or big, should be thinking about all women or at least majority women or uh, businesses that are dominated by women. Um, as far as those women that are in, uh, in positions of power or um, at, at, at senior levels in organizations, it is not always going to be possible for them to, to change policies and hire only women. Uh, but um, they have to do more than just lip service on gender diversity. Most organizations have women in that one particular uh, place or that one woman director. It's not sufficient but because that creates an unhealthy competition amongst women to vie for that one or two jobs in an organization. Women have to think about the future of women just like men think about um, men which creates these bondings within uh, within uh, men which we call them uh, the boys club uh, women have to think about innovative ways about the sisterhood and to be able to bring in uh, more women in uh, broad base uh, the, the number of women that are working in organizations as well as for the upliftment of young uh, women in organizations <laughs>